Welcome to the Bold Analysis. Ladies and gentlemen, Mitheka Linturi, who was appointed the Minister for Agriculture, has a lot of work to do. And the biggest problem is that there are some well-rushed agricultural um, uh, uh, policies on agriculture that have been made in the bid of reversing, in the spirit of reversing President Uhuru Kenyatta's policies. But they have not been receptive at all to the Kenyan farmer. I want to challenge the viewers of the bold analysis that kindly, if you are in a position of the policy paper on the GMO, uh, the, 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 the reversal of the GMO policy, uh, because initially in 2012, this was uh, something that was in 2012. If you are in position of the policy paper, kindly share with me in my WhatsApp. Those who have my WhatsApp, kindly share with me. I really want us to look at it. And um, you will get to understand what exactly we are talking about. The president allowed the importation of the GMOs, genetically modified. Um, and of course, we want to look at it in a manner that will give you a better understanding on what exactly is happening. The Kenyan farmer is actually complaining about the GMOs because the imports are actually affected. And there is more to it. I am one person that, after having exclusive interview with uh, uh, Mount Kenya University lecturer, Mr. Mohoro, we all agreed that that policy, uh, the, the pronouncement by the president, was actually aimed at improving the food security. That when we allow it, we are going to expand the market of our imports. Not the market. We are going to expand our market, our, our import base. There are countries that we could not go to to buy, uh, to take some products or some goods because of the ban of the GMO. And they are that which we can also afford. And we had to go to some places because they are cheap, but again, they're like, that's not what we want. But we are all in agreement that the William Ruto's pronouncement was going to increase food security and food availability. Food security is the food availability. Anyway, when, when, there is more, when there is plenty of the food, then we are secure. Insecurity is lack of it. <laughs> that's, that's a bit on the quantity aspect. But one of the things that was missing was the quality aspect. That are we going to have many, a lot, but a lot that is rotten, that a lot that is a rot. <laughs> are we going to have that? Is that kind? Is that what we were actually preempting? The answer is no. In this video, I want us to look at really through the lenses, through these lenses, I want us to run through the mind of the Kenyan farmer and why they are lobbying and simply crying to the president about that move. Kindly subscribe to our channel. Just click the notification bell and next to the subscription button. We are still running the 50 shillings challenge for the purchase of one extra camera to support my production team in producing the exclusive interviews. I'm reaching out to you in a special way that as little donation as 50 bob, it will help us, it will go in a long way in supporting this channel and of course, boosting our brand. So the number is up there, 0710 62 70, uh, 78 89. And it will appear Kevin or no. So what are we dealing with? I've been speaking to people offline. And, uh, and of course, I, I, I tried. I have tried my best to keep off this conversation about GMO. Because to me, it was more scientific than um, market. 
it's a, it's it's a policy that was the, the advice where it came from a scientific background. I think if you look at what the president is, I, I've always taken it. But what was suspicious is on the way it was handled. A situation where president met uh, U.S. officials, then from there the decision was the decision came through. So people have really questioned on whether we really made that policy based on our internal on the merit on our internal market or in our internal space or to solve our problem or we simply were simply subdued by the u.s powers remember i think they're the biggest producers of that now the kingdom farmer is simply complaining about the import by the way able to say the any one of the problems this GMO issue has come to come to solve is to have available food, even to supply for the drought-stricken areas. Uh, those who have been doing humanitarian projects in those areas, is that the food that you guys are giving? <laughs> I don't know. But now let's go to the Kenyan farmer. The Kenyan farmer is worried of cheap imports. This cheap, this cheap imports in the country and i know that has increased there's actually cheap imports that erode uh, this market um negates the value of our granaries granaries even though we know that artificially here we normally hold some of these cereals and some of these uh, goods so that we create artificial shortage and when it comes, it comes with that inflation, an artificial inflation. I know that that also happens quite often. But the Kenyan farmer seems to be complaining about cheap, cheap imports. Is it about the fertilizer? Is it about uh, the goods, the other factors of production that are coming? By the way, um, if we were to do it well, um, the reason why I really wanted to look at this uh, in, in another manner is the policy direction on it. You know, it was done on, it was a cabinet, um, it was a cabinet proposal, or that was a cabinet pronouncement. It was a cabinet decision. And one thing I've always wondered is whether the minister gave, because you know, when you come out and give a pronouncement, some of these things we just do as a declaration to appease the publics and to be seen as working. But the question that really sinks deep and Kenyan people want to know is whether this was well thought. Is there the policy direction on this? That's what we are asking. If someone up by the hey, mini mangalia koyo website, see only the website of the Minister of Agriculture and Forestry. I'm not seeing anything. <laughs> so what is the police on it? What exactly because it has to control any other thing that we must do must also protect our local market. So I think the farmers are either that's there or the directive is being given. Are they being forced to use some other products? And the other thing that I think is worrying the Kenyan farmer is that it has turned our country uh, to be a research hub. Let me tell you, I will not mention organizations. I don't, I don't want to defend people. There are agricultural, there are NGOs and institutions, not even government institutions, private entities that have are receiving good funding to do agricultural research, which is very good for the country, but majority of it is experimental. But on their problem statement, they have got a leeway by using that pronouncement from the cabinet. So they're getting funding, doing a lot of research, consuming a lot of our land in the research, and that's more of a foreign thing. And that has created disruption in the agricultural system. The kind of disruption that is there to my, to some extent, William Rudder should look at it because it actually may hurt the direct uh, strategy in the direct plan of subsidizing the cost of production so that you boost the product, uh, you, 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 you boost the output. And on that, on the availability, play with the demand curve so that the price of things go down. This, this, this is it. And to some extent, the research, the euphoria of the research organizations. You know, they have also, they have encroached some of the private uh, uh, farmers 
that are now working closely with them. And instead of now focusing on the large scale farming, you know, they are being swayed into that direction. Swayed into that direction of taking, you know, maybe we could talk Mexico, this is from Mexico, we do that mixed farming and do with this fertilizer, you're going to do this. And there is a bit of it. This does not require magical science. Even in my place, in I was in somewhere simple. Where Mutuna, someone was telling me, it could have been a hapa, organization again, it could hapa, you get one day, it's due to pandemic. I'm like, okay. <laughs> there is a bit of that confusion, and the policy must be very delicate. The policy must be very categorical on how uh, that declaration is going to be implemented on the legal. In fact, in fact, we should look at legislative framework. The legislature should look, revisit that and come up with a framework, a legal framework to be used in implementing or rather in executing that order. Uh, I don't know that we are opening our markets um, quite often. Uh, this will be maybe to an additive. It will, we still get more when, when we, many people, many, many of us can import or not. But again, it's a bit of the market trends and the market forces that emerge. I've spoken a lot of economics in this analysis, and I promise you that I'll not do that again. <laughs> I've really tried. I know yesterday in a window, we were, the president told us that uh, he's going to teach the country about agricultural economics. So maybe I'm leading the path on that way. Thank you, guys. That's my bold. <laughs>